Okay. Based yes. off reactions. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to go over here just so I have it up. A3, A2, A1. It's Sunday, December 29th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Comes All Out, the Bear Podcast of Integer and Length, episode number 537. We're also the podcast of Indeterminate Internet Connection. <laughs> Except for the guy who definitely needs to have an internet connection. Otherwise, can't stream shit. Um, but that's okay. Wah, wah. Hey, guess what, folks? It's that time of the month. And uh, uh, it's time for this. So for most of this month, going to work, doing my downtime, playing some Pokemon and, uh, you know, getting through the story, getting like really deep into my Pokedex, trying to get to that point where I can uh, get the shiny charm so I can get better chances at getting a shiny Pokemon. And my backpack gets sold, which contains my Switch. So... Kids, just lock your car doors. Just, just, just lock them. Despite the fact you may feel, feel like, oh, I'm just running in for just a couple of minutes. Lock your car door. That way somebody can't just open it, grab your bag, and then and, and walk away. So, yeah. And of course, the holidays happened. I do the Christmas thing. I'm sure all three of us do the Christmas thing, but, you know, other people may not. But I do the Christmas thing. And, uh, of course, uh, I didn't get to see my sister at all. I just got presents from her. She decided to go the pizza route, get me a new pizza pan and a uh, pizza cutter. Mm -hmm. Uh, My brother got me a uh, fleece throw, uh, Vikings fleece throw. And then, quote unquote, Santa, in the same package, came a package of Santa from Santa of a Dallas Cowboys one. So, yay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Damon and I are on the same page. I'm like, okay. Well, that's because I asked for both. Because I'm close to Cowboys. You know, uh, that's where I'm currently in Austin. I'm in Texas. It's only right. three hours away from, from Dallas. So, if I'm going to do local team, I've decided to pick the Cowboys instead of the Oilers. Okay. When it comes to football, because I, you know, working working at YouTube TV, TV, we have to watch sports because live, and we want to make sure everything goes goes uh, nice because a lot of people like sports. So, kind of get a little bit more in sports, just a little bit. Um, just a little bit. Yeah. You're experimenting. Yeah. My mom got so, me. Go ahead, Jeff. My mom got me a new Vikings T-shirt, which is kind of like the moisture wicking-ish type thing, almost jersey type. Uh, and um, one thing my parents didn't tell me was that there were two other packages that they sent me, which I never knew about, which probably were received uh, sometime in the office on Monday or Tuesday. If I had known about them, mm. I would have got them, picked them up. But when Christmas rolled around and we had our call, I didn't have them. <laughs> Uh-oh. Mm. She's like, you're supposed to have two more. And I'm like, I didn't know about any two more. I just had the packages I knew about. So it's just like, well, you didn't check your mail. Well, even if I check my mail, there's no like note in there that I have a package. So. Right. And if I don't know, it's 
there. I'm not going to go to the office if I don't know that I got a package. I, I don't know. It's just the way our office thing works. Um, so okay, it, I blame well, it on my parents for not saying, by the way, you have two <laughs> other packages coming. <laughs> and then if there were, I would have picked them up. But that's beside the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad got me a stick blender. I forgot why I asked for one. (laughs) All I know is it's very useful. I just can't remember why, because usually if I ask for one of these things, I have an idea of mine and how to use it, like what I want to use Ah. it for. (laughs) But I don't remember. I'm I'm still happy I got one because I kind of have wanted one before. I just don't remember the like recipe or thing. Mm. Also... After my backpack was stolen, I just kind of jokingly just put my Amazon wish list up into the Entourage chat, being like, hey, if anybody wants to get me something, not expecting anything, right? Pa- another package shows up, <gasps> which contains a back- new backpack. <gasps> Ooh. So some anonymous person, I, I literally do not know who you are. Uh, besides the fact that the message said, please keep it anonymous, that's fine. Definitely do that. But I want to thank whoever it was for sending me a brand new backpack. I appreciate that very Yay. much. I feel loved. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that's. And then I'm trying to think if there was any other like Christmas presents I didn't get. I can think of socks, candy. My parents got me. My uh, part of the stocking stuffer was a package of Trident, but I don't eat gum at all. So, yeah, that was what kind of is it? It was just the original Trident. Oh, it's uh, it's already been thrown away. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> I just I did, I'm just not a fan of gum anymore. Anyways. It's okay. So, um, so I had a, kind of a mixed emotions Christmas. <laughs> Fair. Oh, oh. Also, on the way back from uh, right after I had my backpack stolen, uh, I got uh, hit by a car. <laughs> it was just a kind of a, a a little bump, and I couldn't figure out who it was that it was. I didn't see anybody stopping or any or slowing down or anything. So I just kept going. It was pretty much a hit and run. And now I just got a piece so, of my back fender. <laughs> Not fender. The One of my back passenger side panels uh, is broken mm. off. Everything's fine otherwise. And other car problems, but not related to oh. Not related to this. So it, that day was not a good day. I was pissed. Yeah. Anyways. Well, you feel good. Good to know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not let it get to me, but I can't figure out how I'm going to pay to to have my car repaired. So, uh, whatever. Yay! Not having a degree in anything. Damon, mm-hmm. what's been going on with you? Well, <laughs> I've missed a couple of shows. <laughs> And one of the reasons I missed a couple of show recordings was, um, or I didn't around this time. No, never mind. Anyway, Men's Chorus. I had the um, holiday concert for the Men's Chorus back in early December. Um, We sold out, I think, one of the performances, which is awesome. Yay for that. Um, The show was a lot of fun. Um, Queen City Christmas was all about Cincinnati and, and local artists and whatnot. So yay, fun for that. Um... Later on in the month, I did miss the episode because um, I was hosting a game night for our local pet and um, handler organization. Um, Pretty good. Not, you know, had a good time. A few people showed up. Um, I got a, I got this and I'll just show you. We did a um, white elephant and I got this. A big old bag of cereal marshmallows. Oh. <laughs> and some lube and some mad libs, but a big ass bag of cereal marshmallows. Which 
<laughs> we'll talk about <laughs> later. <laughs> there's, a, there's a reason why this is kind of funny and kind of sad. Anyway. Um, um, later on in the month, um, I my other group, Scorpius, we did a we hosted a paper to house event, which is essentially where um, people gave uh, paper goods and and um, toiletries and what have you for uh, a local AIDS organization, and they got raffle tickets and we gave out some really awesome um, raffle baskets. Um, it was at a different bar that we're not used to going to, so there were some hiccups here and there, but the event was successful. Um, um, if you follow me on um, Facebook, you probably saw the photo of all the stuff, or you follow our other group. Actually, I think that's probably where it was. Um, posted a lot of pictures from it. We, we gave a lot of stuff, and we also raised about $150 as well on top of that. So, yay, great time. Um, good, good times. And um, so to finally end everything up, I had a doctor's appointment after Christmas where um, lots of fun things are going on. So the thing here, um, I'm apparently pre-diabetic. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. Not really, but yeah. Um, so getting a whole thing of dehydrated marshmallows is kind of hilarious because <laughs> I will probably not be able to eat them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um um, and I mean, a couple of other things I've, I've been, you know, I've, I think I've mentioned before that my doctor diagnosed me with high blood pressure. Um, and there's also other issues that I'm dealing with. Um, but this is what happens sometimes when you turn 40 and you start getting responsible for your health. <laughs> you find out that there are things wrong that you weren't sure about. So take this hint and tip from me, kids and everyone else out there. Um, if you are able to, you know, please, you know, seek treatment, medical treatment and what have you, because things can come up. And uh, yeah, I, I knew I had a history. Uh, so the high blood pressure is not a not a like a shocker. It's in my family. So I'm not at all surprised by it. Um, the pre-diabetic thing, there's been members in my family that are diabetic, but, you know. Just something to consider. Um, we're going to start now for some lifestyle changes and health changes, and we'll see what happens. So, kids, make sure you've got a, a PCP. Mm -hmm. And you utilize it. Usually, if yeah. you've got, you got insurance, it's either free or uh, minimal copay. So, mm -hmm. And... Um, Christmas was Christmas was spent at home. Jim and I actually we did Christmas Eve with his family. Um, we did a gift exchange and we played the. Um, I think I talked about this last year, the Saran ball like mm. unwrapping kind of thing, which was kind of fun. Uh, and um, on Christmas Day, Jim and I did jack shit. Um, we didn't do anything. <laughs> we exchanged our gifts. But, like, we were at home. We we sat in our jammies. Jim made breakfast and then made dinner. Um, but the day was spent doing nothing. And so it was wonderful glorious. <laughs> you know, I got a I, thanks for this. Yeah, so a very wonderful Christmas. You know, doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> like, just sitting at home, watching TV, relaxing, um, yeah, great, great time. I highly recommend it. Yay! Yeah. Gary? Uh, yeah, so December's almost over. Um, I don't know. I feel very mad about December this year. <laughs> um, the weather was cold, it snowed, then it didn't snow, then it warmed up, and then it rained, and it rained, and it rained. Yeah, so... There's that. Yay, with the blouse. Yeah, so um, Christmas was okay. Uh, my dad was gifted by his parents a power Lazy Boy lift recliner. Ooh. So it uh, helps lift him up, makes it easier to get in and out of, as well as recline. Uh, so he has a new toy. 
Um, Christmas at his family was interesting. Um, I took a Yule log, also known as a Bush de Noel, that I had ordered by a local new business that is a crepe uh, shop. So it was made out of crepes. Okay. It was yummy, but um, the family was like, what's that? (laughs) (laughs) So... And then my father decided that he wanted for Christmas to have a pie because he said we don't have pies. And I was like, Dad, we had seven of them at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So I said, well, what kind of a pie do you want? And he said, well, I'm, I'm you know, preferable to nut pies. And I said, okay. So like a pecan. He's like, actually, I haven't had a black walnut pie in a long time. And I was like, okay. So I made one for Christmas. Whoa. Well, that's what? Specific. That's specific. <laughs> I know. I know. It's fine. To be fair, though, a black walnut pie is not much any different than a pecan pie, other than just fair. That's for the most part. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then the family was like, what's that? And I was like, it's a black walnut pie. They're like, a what? And I was like, it's like a pecan pie, only it's made with black walnuts. A little different, yeah. So. I was just like kind of confusing the family <laughs> greatly quite a bit. You gave them crepe, like boost in a well. You gave them a black walnut pie instead of a po- pecan pie. I know. What is going on with you? <laughs> it's like, what's wrong? <laughs> oh, well, this year was definitely all a kilter because my aunt, who always makes like dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of sugar cookies every year, didn't make any this year. Ooh. I know, and the whole family was like, what? And I was like, it don't affect me. I don't care about sugar cookies. Oh, and then I'm still like the black sheep outcast of the family because I don't like sponge candy. And the whole family just kind of turned and looked at me like, Arr? like, what? Like, how do you not like that? And I'm like, I don't. I don't, because I don't even know this, what it is. I'm half not this family. <laughs> so... so <much. laughs> Sponge candy, for those that don't know, let me look it up and see what the official definition is. It's a chocolate confection. It's very popular here where I grew up at. And uh, let me see. And it's usually chocolate covered. Um, da, 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 da. I'm trying to think if there's like a buffalo ball. Yada, 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 yada. So, um it's got it's made with a um a confection in the middle that uses baking soda so it like it's all bubbly and it kind of looks like i don't know how to explain it like it's kind of like um honeycomb or i'm looking at it now yeah okay i see it i've i don't know if i've ever had it before but it looks familiar yeah, so the basic ingredients are sugar, corn syrup, vinegar, and baking soda. And the vinegar and baking soda, of course, when they react, you know, as an acid and a base, there is, like, a reaction. And so it gets all super bubbly and stuff. But anyways, it, like, kind of, like, foams up, and then it stays that way, and it hardens. And then people, like, they might add a flavoring to it, and then they cover it in chocolate. It was one of my mother's favorite, uh, like, candies. And I would get it for her for, like, her birthday or for Christmas or whatever, but I personally could not stand it. Mm-hmm. And so the whole family was like, how can you not like it? And I'm like, it's quite easy because if I wanted to eat styrofoam packing peanuts, I would just eat them <laughs> like as opposed to that. Ooh. Yeah, I'm I just saying I've had some of this before. I, I think part of it is texture. Also, it might yeah. there's like no taste to it. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, yeah, it is also known as honeycomb candy. For some people, ah, toffee. Sometimes, I see. That's why I think I probably have had it because that looks familiar. Yeah, uh, who knows? Anyway, doesn't matter. It, it's it's gone. No one likes. I mean, so well, you in don't our, like it. In our area, <laughs> all three of the major chocolate families in our city make it, and it's usually orange in color. I don't know if it's necessarily orange flavored, but it's just this thing where I was like. So, so yeah, that happened. So 
I brought odd desserts that I'm also not a fan of a, of a dessert that the family really <laughs> enjoys. Um, yeah. Oh, Gary. So, yeah. Just proving yet again how unique, different, and special I am, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I also talked about the fact that my mother disowned me because I don't like mint chocolate chip ice cream. <gasps> oh. oh, yeah. I remember that. I love mint that's chocolate so... chip ice cream. I feel sorry for you, but that's okay. It's fine. You don't have to feel sorry for me. You should feel happy for me because that means there's more for you. It's kind of like. (laughs) This is true. This is true. I I, I meant to say, man, I take it back. It's like heterosexuality or like or, or like homosexuality when people say about, you know, being gay is a limiting option. And I'm like, no, see, I'm not interested in women. That leaves all the women for everybody else. So for everyone who is, you know, bisexual, who is lesbian, who is heterosexual, male attracted to women, like they're all yours. All yours. They <laughs> yeah. have, I am not. Yeah. Go out. <laughs> Frolic. You be you, boo. It's not my, it's my, my jam. Yeah, it's funny. You're not. You're the second person I know of that can. No, no, no. You're not the second. It's probably like the third or fourth that I know that doesn't like mint chocolate chip. And don't get me wrong. Like I like mint, and I like chocolate, but I really have to be in the mood for it. Like, and like once every three to five years, I'll have a peppermint patty, if that. Mm. <laughs> like it's just not my. It's not my gig, you know. And I'm not. I don't. I, I don't dislike it that I, you know, get sick or anything. You're, uh, yeah. It's just that if particular it, thing. Yeah. So you really not hate this time of year. Well, no, I don't. I'm not saying well, that. No, I, peppermint, like peppermint bark. There's like everything is like oh, peppermint tea yeah, and chocolate. Yeah, like everything yeah. is fucking peppermint chocolate. This oh, time of and year. it gets worse, people. Everything is white chocolate. Mmm. Okay, first of all, white chocolate is not really chocolate. It's <laughs> okay. Butter. Okay. Okay, Gary. Okay. Oh, it's not really chocolate. <laughs> We're not going to get you on the rant. <laughs> oh, but, hey. Have you listened to this show? <laughs> Comparison, like, <laughs> oh God, we're comparing ice cream flavors to sexuality. Right, right. When is the magic going to stop? I'm like, Owen, have you have you listened to the show? <laughs> People are just like, look, I made blah blah blah, and I'm like, okay, I just feel bad because they're like, don't you know? But no, thank you, not interested. <laughs> Pass. Yeah, so I, I just eat all your mint chocolate chip ice cream for you. You can have all of it. You can also and eat all I the peppermint have... bark. Yeah, I'll take see, that. Actually. See, I'm, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of like peppermint bark. I don't. I'm not a fan of like uh, candy canes or anything like that. Because mint chocolate chip is not like pe- is not peppermint. Keep it. Keep that in mind. So you can't put those two together. They're two separate. But things. that's. But that's. See, that's. See, uh, Jeff, I will take. I'll take the something. thin mints. See, uh, that's the thing that people like, they don't understand because they're like, here, would you like a mint? And I'm like, what kind of mint? And they're like, huh? And I'm like, is it wintergreen? Is it spearmint? Is it peppermint? And they look at you like, what's the big deal? The big deal is they have three different flavor profiles and I don't Mm -hmm. care for spearmint or wintergreen very much. I just like straight up peppermint. Fine. But yeah. Girl, same. Like... (laughs) <laughs> I can I can do it on occasion, but Lord, like I bought a thing because it was the only one I saw. I bought a thing of spearmint gum because I needed something like I was going somewhere and I wanted my like I didn't want my breath to smell like onions or whatever I'd had for lunch. And I was just like, I need something in my mouth to like, like get the taste out. And the only like for whatever reason, the only gum that they had available was like a spearmint. And I was like, fuck. So I grabbed it and I had it and I was sad for the rest of the day. <laughs> Hey, here's a here's a, que- a side question um, uh, on the the mint scale. Um, would you have like a grasshopper pie or even a grasshopper drink? Negative, never, oh, yeah. no, okay. absolutely not. <laughs> I will not make a grasshopper pie for you. You can make it for yourself, and you can enjoy all of it. Yes. <laughs> I get none. You get all. You win. So it's not even a strong. Strong but, minty so, flavor or anything. Here's here's the kicker though. Beside the point. At work, we did a secret ho ho ho, big jelly elf, uh, exchange. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. They called it Santa, but you know. Um, <laughs> so, on our teams, everybody wrote on a little slip of paper three possible things they would like as a gift, and then they put it in a thing with their name, you know. And then it was, you know, interchanged, and you didn't know who you, like everybody else had. And then it was revealed on our holiday like celebration where we got a free lunch that was catered, and blah blah blah. Um, so everybody exchanged, you know, their gifts or and that kind of jazz. The person who got me got me dentine Arctic chill, like the dentine ice gum that I like. And it was funny because she had said to me, that's not an easy flavor to find. I said, yes, I know, because it's not, I guess, the more popular of the flavors. She said, well, I was glad I was able to find it. Like, you could find it, but it's not at every single store. You know how, like, some mm-hmm. gum things are in every single store no matter where you go? This one is not. Yeah. But yeah. it was kind of funny, and I told her, I said, I said, there are two of these dentine things that I like. I'm like, I like dentine fire, which is the cinnamon, and then there's the dentine uh, ice, the Arctic chill, which is this, like, cool, refreshing, menthol kind of peppermint thing. Mm-hmm. But I use them to knock stuff out. Like David said, like you have, you know, something that, you know, I can give you some some breath. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, you know, that's usually and the thing is, what's hysterical is that where I work at, it's kind of contraband. You're not supposed to have it, but (laughs) I like have it hidden. (laughs) So well, you're not allowed to have chewing gum for phone calls. So when you're on the phone, you don't want to be chewing gum. So that's just it. Like I chew it you know, when I'm not on calls or like I would take it with me or, you know, I would use it like after lunch or something. Mm-hmm. So, so anyways, it was quite comical. That is what she got me. And she, and she's like, so you like it? I was like, absolutely. Like I put it on my list, like explicitly on purpose. Like, so, <laughs> so I don't have to go buy more. Uh-huh. So <laughs> <laughs> Useful Christmas gifts. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, so the month kind of has come and gone and it's been okay. Um, and I, after the first year, I've got to get to a doctor. Like, I've just, I've been very tired and feeling so hot. And so, you know, it's just, meh. it's just mm. that. Yay for so, winter blahs. Yeah. So there's only a couple of days left in the year. And then it's 2020. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, next week is our year in review. So if you guys. Our, our listeners and watchers and everything um, have any moments that you really enjoyed or anything that you want to share uh, let us know give us a call shoot us an email leave a comment on our uh, video or our blog um, so that we can uh, share that next week uh, in the meantime I think it's that time anything else before I hit the button Mm-mm. okay no, I'm, gonna no, the, sir. I'm gonna hit the button Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, so we had a Facebook share, Mr. Edward Angelini Cook, uh, who was on episode 535, shared our post and said, I recorded this podcast a few weeks ago about Santa fantasies with Cubs Out Loud and totally forgot to share it. Here you go, my lovelies. Fair warning. Some of it is R-rated. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag truth. Yeah. See, I'm a little upset. Hey. I'm sorry. You was busy. <laughs> I know, but it's, still. It's, it's not oh our fault. God. And our planned guest couldn't make it, so I scrambled. <laughs> and I was like, let me go with the one who's getting a PhD in, like, like you know, um, sexual health. And, you know, and so I was like, hey. Are you available today? I realize you just got back home from being out of town. And here's the show. Might be up your alley. So he took a nap and he woke up and he was like, I feel refreshed. I am game. And then he came prepared. He had a whole bunch of things to talk about. And I was oh like, he, oh he's, one, he's one of my favorite, favorite uh, guests. Like, you give him the document, he fills it out. Yeah. So, voice out. That's Thanks cool. for coming on the show. Uh, we also had Facebook likes. So we would like to thank the following individuals for liking our uh, Facebook page, which is David Rod, Herschel Young, Mike Meyer, Donaldson Heinrich, 
uh, Benzai Bear and uh, I'm going to screw this up. Alika Kiavana Kani, a.k.a. <laughs> Kenny, a.k.a. Panda, who was on last week. So if you listen yeah. to that episode's uh, intro, you notice I didn't say his last name. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but in pre-show, despite the pre-pre-show, fact that it was written there, I know pre-pre-show, I'd actually talked to him and found out how to pronounce it correctly. So, yeah, yeah. So I just, I just shortened things. I kept in the like. If you look at the like how it's written, you'll see the whole name there. I just yeah. chose to not attempt to because I didn't quite remember how to pronounce it. So That's it's right. me That's trying fine. to be kind and not mispronounce his name. Well, you know. Perfect. Uh, over on our Instagram, we also got a whole bunch of followers uh, this month. So we would like to thank Roy the Cub sixty nine, C A seven three zero four seven two eight, Ralpo, Craiger underscore Cub, Eric underscore the underscore Wolf. Wonder who that is. Uh, Chub with two B's, Cub zero six, Oso Kiraj three eight. And Viking Jake seventy two. I know who Viking Jake is. I think that's Oso Karage. Karage. Yeah. Oso Karage, yeah. It's a uh, Japanese inspired. Okay. Thanks. So Or is it Oso Spanish? I can't remember, but Oso is technically Spanish. Anyways. All of that said, Damon. <laughs> Damon, Ooh, the one who okay. doesn't really pre-read anything <laughs> you're oh, up we're good. to that mister we're fine because guess what i've been doing bitch <laughs> um, are you going? so we have two new youtube tube subscribers uh, rick john templato and mario forte mm-hmm. and we got several youtube comments over the past month and yeah, i'm gonna did. go through them very quickly for col road trip claw 2016 um, so a few years ago, Owen writes, um, LOL, watching these three years later, Gary looks different with dark brown hair. Looks like fun. <laughs> and then on COLTV001, on the Dim Sum episode, Owen writes, been wanting to go through your backlog and just binge all your videos. I'll probably do it. And it looks like you are. So great. Uh-huh. Um, Especially considering it's COLTV01, which was first generation. Yeah. Um, then COL 200 Cubs Against Humanity, which I probably was our first time playing that online. Wow. Uh, and it got, Owen writes, would you guys ever consider revisiting video to review or revise your choices? Could hmm. be complicated, but, you know. Yeah. Well, the one thing I do know, um, unfortunately, um, you cannot play Cards Against Humanity on... Um, through hangouts anymore. Yeah, but you, we could like look at what we did answer and see if we have uh, in previous videos and just see if we would have chosen a different mm-hmm. one. But. Interesting. But then also, our... also, we don't know what our other choices were. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right. Anyway, um, so back on um, so CWL well four seventy seven, which was Power Hour six. Um, Guest birthday bacchanal. Um, Birdie Birthface says, Tubbs, oh my, for our wonderful um, Tubbs, who I follow on Twitter and um, y'all. Uh, <laughs> um, COL 509, are we selling out? Birdie Birthface replied, Education has a lot to do with the class system. You separate the poor from the rich by privatizing elite, quote unquote, education, pay public school teachers trash wages with higher class numbers and low resources. Private school teachers are at the other end of the scale and earn more by default. Essentially, the education could be on par with each other, but the prestige of the certificate at the end of the journey is what people see. Can't have us grubby, poor people mixing with the Joneses. It is just not on. The entirety of society works this way. You pay to play. We all breathe the air, drink the same water, regardless of what the label says, in in parentheses. But, quote, got to get them separated. Got to keep them separated, end quote. Interesting concept Mm -hmm. and thought. 
Um, so I'm trying to remember because <laughs> I was earlier this year. The are we selling out? I think it was kind of about when the concept of the show was about whether or not we're just um, taking things as they come and accepting them instead of like challenging them, like in terms of what we're being sold via like commercialism and social media and that kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, I think what what Birdie is saying is you know related to that that there's a price to pay for. I think mm-hmm. we did talk a little bit about for the accessibility system during that show too. Mm-hmm. And then on and excuse me, and then on COL 525, um, what is confidence? Birdie replied, the quote unquote big guy comment should not have been taken as a total negative. As weird as it seems, it is meant as a compliment, um, parenthesis, ignorant compliment, not as a fat guy, but perhaps it puts the spotlight on you for that moment and highlights insecurities. He's asking. It does. Like, Hmm. because I know I'm probably the one that said not a fan, like was called big guy in high school, especially by like one of the uh, coaches slash teachers in phys ed class was always annoyed by it. Like, and so, yeah, it's really a perspective thing, too, because some people might be like, oh, it's just that, you know when you're young and somebody refers to you as a big guy, it's like, Hey, I'm all grown up Um, versus somebody who is actually big around the middle um, who, who might even at a younger age be like, yeah, compared to others, I am fat and you're calling me fat. Mm. That sort of thing. Like, again, it's it's a perspective thing. So it is, but it's like a, it's like a twisted logic to call it a compliment. It's like, where else do you define somebody by a physical trait and say that it's a compliment? Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to even tell if it's it's supposed to be. And some people won't take it as a compliment, and some people may have meant it as a compliment, but it's not how the perspective of the person. So I could no, I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, I'm just trying to get uh, both sides of the perspective here. No, it's fine. Mm-hmm. I just I just fight it. Like the intention uh, wasn't meant to be an insult. Right, but that's like but you could say that. Insulting. But that's like saying, Hey, four eyes. Like, <laughs> how is that a compliment? You're pointing out a feature about a person and you're making that distinctly like the the label, the moniker by which like you recognize them. Right. Do you know? Like mm-hmm. I, I just kind of uh, like to me it's a twisted logic of it. It's like, why do you even do that to begin with? Because you don't do it in the inverse. Like you wouldn't mm-hmm. see you wouldn't talk to somebody and be like, Hey thin rail and like for somebody who is extremely skinny, you know, or thin, you know, I mean, I just, I don't know. Like, I, yes, I'm super sensitive about it because yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it happened to me. But at the same time, like, why would you even focus on the physical? It's, it's, it's complicated enough in our society, in our world, that we focus so much on the exterior. Why would you want to call it out, you know, in yeah. that case? Yeah, it's it's one of those things where because of these different types of perspectives, it's probably better to just avoid it to make sure there isn't any misunderstanding of intention. Yeah. Okay, so um, COL 531, um, what's going on for October? Birdie Birdface asked or responded. He says, thanks guys for the response. Read my previous questions um, in front of the giving slash receiving. It was far too general to be fair. As you guys mentioned, it is totally dependent on the person and the situation. It was more centered around our, your own personal experiences. Of my small circle of friends, all are givers, including me. You can call me Bert anytime. Cheers. And then like a winky, smiley, and when it kind of face. Cool. So... When Bert says that he's the giver, does that mean he's the top? Like, is that the is that the underlying <laughs> thing here? I'm just saying, trying to make sure. Hard to tell. <laughs> oh my god! Well, he could be anyway. giving a blowjob. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's oh my amazing. god! Anyway, oh my god! Right along. <laughs> COL five thirty three for which was what's going on for October of twenty nineteen. Birdie birthday says happy birthday to you all. Oh, thank you. Because I think that was. Did we talk about my birthday? And probably. Oh, wait. Me and Gary, probably. Yeah, both of our birthdays are in November. Yeah. Well, mine's in October. Oh, for some reason I kept thinking. Oh, that's right. Yours is 
October, mine's in November. So we probably talked about that then. Maybe yeah. catching up since August. Mm. Okay, and then on COL 534, which was our this, that, or other useful holiday gifts, um, Ace Hardy gave us a um, celebration um, emoji. The I forget what those are called. The cracker? The yeah. Pop, the cracker pop, like, confetti thing? Yeah. It took yeah. me a while to figure out what the hell that thing was. I was like... <laughs> I was like, it looks like a bra that's exploding. <laughs> no, it's one of those balls which pop up and drop confetti. Yeah. yeah. Usually hung and, from a ceiling and, and you pull a cord and things fall out. Hey, congratulations. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I was having five... the same problem. <laughs> and then you said what it was and I was like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. Seal, on COL 536, which was our Let's Talk About Sex prep episode, Bernie Bayface replied, um, hope you guys had a great Christmas. Another solid podcast. Cheers. So, Thanks. Thank you, Bertie. And over and in the Twitterverse, then... uh, we've got uh, uh, new followers of Gunben Pow, uh, Tiny55996081. I have still have feelings for those type of number things. Anyways, uh, EDRC19 and Bear Nursing. Uh, mm. So, Gary, uh, what's been going on over this past month for shows? Uh, we did a handful of shows. So, at the top of the month, we did a What's Going On for November 2019. Uh, as we mentioned, we did a This, That, or Other Useful Holiday Gifts where the three of us talked about things that we thought would be practical for people uh, that we personally have enjoyed and benefited from. Uh, and then Jeff, you and I had, as I said, um, Edward on as a guest, and we talked about the Santa fantasy. So in that episode for 535, we talked about how um, – and uh, you know, I had not considered – Till Ed came on about how there is so many subliminal points that basically it's almost impossible to avoid making Santa sexual, which I just had never really considered before. So <laughs> I highly suggest people go back. And I had no that problem one. with it. I knew. <laughs> that. Uh, and then the long awaited, uh, Unfortunately, postponed due to computer uh, delay stuff, but we got to have Mario and Kenny on last week for 536. Let's talk about sex. And we did. We talked about prep. So, yeah. Yeah. So Uh, we had a a busy month and it's five Sundays this month. So here we are. Yeah. And a question from the chat. So additional feedback. Um, uh, Elroy Jackson says, hey, hey guys, will you be going to any bear runs anytime soon? Not I, unfortunately. Um, I will be at North American Bear um, in February. Um, and right now, um, that's probably going to be it for a while. Um, main reason being, um, in July, so any of the chorus, you know, people that are in, like, um, gay men or lesbian or our mixed voice choruses that are part of gala uh, which is a gay and lesbian association of choruses our four year um, festival is in Minneapolis in July of 2020 Ooh. so I will be going to that um, so I will that will North American Bear will probably at least for now be the only bear run event that we go to um, we're talking about maybe going to claw, but we're not 100% sure. So we'll talk later, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that face. <laughs> yeah. I want to say all sorts of things about Gala, but I'm going to keep that to myself for now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't expect to be going uh, to anything. Well, I don't expect to be going to any bear runs in the next like six months. I'll put it that way. Mm. Um, obviously, I'm you know working on and putting together uh, Drench Fur for Drench Fur 16. It's coming up at the first weekend in April here in Erie. But um, I did not go to Midwest this year, and um, I don't think I'm going to be going to North American Bear. And it's not that I don't want to go to these things, but. For those that don't know, quick uh, recap of my life. So in 
at this time two years ago in 2017, uh, no longer had my job that I had been with for quite a long time. And so that vastly changed in uh, my finances and outlook and stuff. And then 2018 was not a great year because it was a lot of ups and downs and a huge amount of a major depression. And now I believe, based on some things that I've read, I actually had PTSD, which sounds weird to say because mm. most people think of PTSD as like a um, – like they think of it in terms of like soldiers in war, but mm-hmm. PTSD is actually defined as like post traumatic stress disorder, as in you like had a stressful event and or a trauma. Mm-hmm. And these things could be death of a loved one, uh, mm-hmm. massive upheaval in your life, a divorce, uh, loss of a job. Like there's these significant things. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So it just kind of like turned my world sideways and whatever. So. Uh, this year got things sort of back on track and some good stuff is looking forward to in 2020. So I know there's lots of people out there that are talking in terms of 2020 as being, you know, like the, the year of vision and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, all this kind of stuff. (laughs) And it usually happens around this time of year. People talk very positively about like the coming year and all that kind of crap. But I definitely am looking forward to some new opportunities and I don't think, if everything comes together that I will be able to do much until probably the summer. Um, so it like, I can't, there's nothing I can do about that in terms of like finances yeah. and, and yeah. some travel and be- stuff. Because of, yeah. of life changes, all those on, on the road shows we used to have has, haven't really been happening for various reasons. Uh, but uh, if things turn around and everything, maybe, I don't know. I'm not going to run the road, <laughs> the road shows. Well, I mean, it was, you know, everything is kind of revolved around with this podcast all these years, you know, about what is available to be done at that time. So, like, as an example, like, I might go to Claw this year. I'm probably going to go, but that's only because of proximity. Like, it is literally less than two hours away from me. Mm-hmm. So, like, I can easily get there, even if I just go there for one day. Like, I could mm-hmm. kind of pop in, see some folks I know, hang out, you know maybe go to the vendor market and to, you know, a couple of like workshop sessions or something and then that's it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like, that's purely just about proximity is, is really what that is. And I think that's in a way, I think that's becoming more true in terms of bear runs. I think the, the era of people really traveling for bear events is diminishing. I don't know for certain. And I could be out of the loop because I haven't been going to one, but I don't have the impression that people are really doing a lot of that. I think there was a there was a good five, six, seven years where people were really just traveling like wherever mm-hmm. to do anything. And I don't know as much if that's really happening. I mean, and, and I told people that, you know, in America, come 2018, well, 2016, 2017, 2018, like – we went through this big psychological thing as a country, speaking as, as you know, the United States, that I think has really kind of shifted people. And uh, I think it's made people kind of sit back and consider and take perspective about what's important, um, you know. And so I think that that, you know, kind of made people like, well, maybe I won't <laughs> travel as much. Or if I do, yeah. like, it's going to be less, you know, like, I'm not going to go as as to as many places and do as many things now i know for next year um there may be some travel opportunities that come my way which are not about leisure but uh i am not one to let a business trip not have any like leisure aspect to it so (laughs) saying for the record like if i have to travel at all watch on your crawlers hey well (laughs) oh I have I have sort of promised Daddy Hadrian that if he and I could meet up sometime, that that would be a thing. So that could be an on the road. Sure. Comes out loud, the retired you know adult <laughs> entertainer, you know. So. <laughs> Just saying. That goes from the Cubs Athletics to account. Anyways. <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. I love don't you, Gary. We don't have that. It <laughs> Although mean we can't we, create one. <laughs> you know what? We should probably look online to see if somebody's created an X-Tube account and a Pornhub <laughs> account 
and uh, like, what's the other one? It's like, we should really be checking all this shit to see if somebody has a maybe a just create an account so that nobody out. else can. Yeah, exactly. Our, we should we should name intellectual squad, property. Our own name. Yeah, and, and we could okay. even use those to favor up videos. Yeah, you know, I suppose. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's move on. Uh, we're going right into this. <laughs> Hey, it's time for some Twitter time because, you know, Tumblr still hasn't quite gotten back on its feet again, if you get. Uh, I'm starting off with hope your new year is filled with lots of love and lots of sex from Chicago Sicardad. Oh, my. Oh, yes. He's wow. He's got a package. That's a hell of a photo, though. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, yes it is. I mean, I'm Very just, nice. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's well composed. I like the, the DS kind of visual re- representation between the sir and the boy and the kneeling and they're both in jock straps and stuff. But I also, also like, I like the backdrop with the big 2020 <laughs> and the fireworks and the cityscape. Like it's, it's like a bar ad. Like it's a, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, Hey, bring, bring in the new year with a bang, Ooh. you know, that kind of bang. <laughs> big ass dick. Yeah. So I do follow this man on 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 Twitter, and I've actually um, run into him at a couple of events. I just have not. I've I will own. Um, I have not like actually talked to him because I'm. Uh, it's that whole like. You lust after him. Shit. Yeah. 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 Um, I've gotten a little closer because I've, I've, I've I'm um, he posted something and I replied to it and he liked it. So I'm like, Oh, ho, ho, there we go. Um, <laughs> little, 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 like a, a fan boyish thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Senpai noticed me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, we, we, he is, he is quite the packing down there. Yes, for sure. He does have packages. Mm-hmm. Very nice packages. Demon, what do you got? Yes. Demon. So I actually have two because I just couldn't. I just couldn't pick you, one. You can't just. Pick um, one. I couldn't. I couldn't. So um, the first one is. Uh, I, it says they called him Andy, um, and it's from. If you've seen him, on, he was on Tumblr for a long time. Real man, real life. Um, but he's now over on Twitter, where he's still on Tumblr. But he posts the more like suggestive photos there, and on Twitter he's able to post like the more like R-rated ones. Um, but it says um, he called himself Andy, but I knew who he really was. After delivering all those toys, I suggested he get comfortable and relieve some tension. And then there's a Santa emoji. So, mm. and it's a very very handsome daddy bear. Um, who I mean, um, um, yum. <laughs> Just so For beautiful. the record, if you go to that tweet and you see the comments, the Andy that is the photographed like subject actually comments. So you can actually oh, follow the real Andy. Wait, what? Oh, there he is. Oh, mm-hmm. Andy Chris Harker. Good to know and followed. <laughs> oh, he's from oh, he's from Colorado. Damn it. Anyway. He's um, gorgeous. Yes, he is. And continuing on the dad um track. Um I have um serving dad vibes, which is from um Chat guy XXX, which I think Gary is someone that maybe pointed me to this guy. I'm not sure, possibly. Um, but he put in a tweet um, Someone requested me in a bathrobe with my belly exposed, sending dad vibes on this cold and gloomy Tuesday. Um, and it's Mr. It's Baloo, our chat guy XXX. Um, that's chat C H A T T guy XXX. And which I think is a reference. Guy. Yeah, I was going to say. Just chatting. Hmm? Ah, 
But uh, notably, he's wearing bearskin. Yep. Yes. Boxer briefs. So, you know. Mm-hmm. And he's a lovely uh, treasure trail on his tummy. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, some dads for Christmas. Dang. <laughs> Enjoy. Gary. So, mine is called uh, On My Way Back From Home Depot by Bears and Bourbon. Uh, The full caption is, had to pull over on my way back from Home Depot. That store makes me so horny. It's a 44-second video. Oh, yeah. Uh, It's one you'll want to watch again later. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. I follow him as well already on the Twitters. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do not. I do. And I'm reading through all the comments, and it's so funny how all these guys are like, "Me too. Me too. I know. Tell me about it." All the contractors, like, (laughs) y'all just like on and on about how Home Depot turns them on and gets them going. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Left someone's like, "May I offer roadside service?" Ah, Daddy Depot is a fun store to visit. Uh, oh, fun. Ah, this is a good video. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone said this is why you don't pick up your phone. <laughs> In other words, they were calling him out for not answering his phone, which I think is funny. Um, oh, does it phone ring him? I didn't even pay attention. <laughs> no, no, their whole point is like this is the reason you never answer your phone. Like in other words, they try to they try to call it and he doesn't answer, so you know. Very nice. So mm-hmm. I really liked it. I thought, you know, I can't disagree. Sometimes I've been in a store like that and I've been like, damn, this is this is probably some of the best, you know. Every once in a while. <laughs> like, okay. Like maybe that's a less talk about sex. Maybe just like like I don't know. Like favorite because I was we were at, no I was at we were coming to we went to IHOP for for breakfast or brunch this morning this afternoon excuse me we went late and um, as we were like pulling into the, the um, parking lot there was this super hot like dad <laughs> just I mean he was walking with his son but I was looking at the dad and like. Like mm-hmm. fuck, just like just stroller meat, beard, like salt and pepper, and and a beard, and like a nice little belly, and it's like a shaved head, and from what I could see, some really nice eyes. Like these daddies are coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on into the link, uh, I'm the only one with one, and mine is. Um, Star Wars Blue Monday. So if you mm-hmm. like Blue Monday and you like Star Wars, this is a pretty cool video. I don't think I know what this is. Like Blue Monday? Nope. No idea. A new order? Nope. It's a if you if you've ever heard the Kylie Minogue song uh, "Can't Get You Out of My Head," she does a "Can't Get Blue Monday Out of My Head," which is a mashup between her song oh. and "Blue Monday," which is very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a, a one minute and change uh, Star Wars and Blue Monday, and I think it's like Trey cool because I love the song "Blue Monday." So I like a. Somebody did a cover of it that I really liked too. I, for some reason, can't remember uh, who it was, but it was a newer, newer-ish band. It's been out for a while. So someone said, "I will throw money at you to make a longer version of this." Republic credits will do fine. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, that's such a Star Wars joke. Nice. My my my. Hey, guess what, folks? It's the end. Of the year. Uh-huh. Thank you for joining us through the year of 2019. Here it comes out loud. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you to all of your patrons who've been supporting us over the year. Um, got me a new computer. 
um, and it's yeah. actually been very nice at streaming this. It's barely done any before. It's like it was using like over fifty percent of my CPU to to stream. Now it's using like three or four percent. Wow, <laughs> which is very cool. <laughs> I just kind of noticed that today. I'm like looking at the CPU and I'm like, wow, that's very low. <laughs> so. It, that got me excited, which means we're streaming. We should be streaming better. Yay! And, um, and so uh, we thank you for that. Uh, we're working on on some rewards, probably in the new year. Uh, you should be getting some of those rewards to all of our patrons. I appreciate that very much. You can find all of that if you want to become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Um, there are plenty of ways also to contact us. Let us know what uh, your comments about what your favorite moments and uh, uh, anything you want. Um, you can comment on our blog at cubsoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 we'll talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can find us on various social media outlets in the appropriate with Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, on YouTube. You can join our entourage chat, find out, see when we announce that we are going live, um, and uh, other chat and pictures um, at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Subscribe to our Google Calendar on our computer at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can also get merchandise such as three, at least four. How many, how many merch we got? We got four pieces of merch that you can see on screen. We got a it comes out loud long sleeve shirt, although you can get the same design on a short sleeve. You can choose your options in different colors. Um, you also got, now, now that we're sticky, now here's your cookie uh, shirt designed by Smashy that uh, Damon's wearing. We got another design by Smashy, uh, Consent is My Ford Play, um, which uh, Gary's wearing. He's wearing the bear one. We also have three other designs with uh, Pup. Uh, leather and trans versions and also a cubs out loud hat which gary is wearing and mine is somewhere over there in various <laughs> colors and, and designs uh that's all at sets.com slash cubs out loud again patreon.com slash uh cubs out loud uh, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts, uh, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcasts, and over on Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It's just box, set box, puppy box, cup, box, something or other. Um, I am Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. Uh, the fun Twitter version is GearBear73 with three X's at the end. Um, and if you're going to friend me anywhere online and it's because of the podcast, please send me a message and do so. Otherwise, I think you're a bot or a weird stalker. So, no. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> And oh, if you no. uh, find us through the podcast, let them know. So you, even if you are one, anyway. <laughs> With that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, y'all. Happy New Year. Stalker, don't call me out like that. <laughs> Says Owen. We love Owen. He's a funny young man. Ow. Uh. Yay. Welcome to the post show. Where we post the show? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Large 
Uh, we have the thrilling end of the year stuff. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. And, and and of course, uh, Posho ends up being really boring because Gary he can't hear a thing. Can you hear this? 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 Or anything? Nope. No response. Okay. Oh, boo. That's weird. Uh, I don't know what's going on, y'all. Every time. Uh. Anyway, we're about to order dinner. And I'm just like, happy, happy, happy. Mm-hmm. That's understandable. So, mm-hmm. sorry, sorry, patrons, and uh, this is a really boring <laughs> end of show. But Aww. technical difficulties abound. What do you expect? Anyways, I'm going to stop streaming. Okay.